Hello, welcome to Cafe Ronjin Journal Watch. Here we discuss interesting radiology articles. My name is Orhu Chatterjee. I'm a junior consultant in Tata Medical Center, Kolkata. Today our topic of discussion is hepatopiliary phase hypointense nodules without arterial phase hyperenhancement in cirrhotic livers. What do they represent? We are going to discuss this article that is published in radiology this year. So we are definitely talking about liver nodules. However, authors did not mention a very important point in the title. They need to mention that they are discussing nodules in cirrhotic livers. The reason why cirrhotic liver needs to be mentioned is simple. While metastatic nodules are one of the most common solid malignant focal lesion in normal livers, in a cirrhotic liver, 90% of the malignant nodules are HCCs and metastases are rare. In a cirrhotic liver, there are hepatocellular origin nodules, which include from cirrhotic nodules to progressed HCC. Now, hepatocellular origin nodules progressively show hypointensity in hepatobiliary phase with increasing dedifferentiation. On the other hand, there can be non-hepatocellular origin nodules that are always hypointense in hepatobiliary phase. Now, why does this happen? Hepatocytes have organic anion transport protein or OATP that uptake bile acids from sinusoids. Hepatocyte specific MR contrast agents like gadoxetate and gadobenet are also taken up by the same receptors. Hence, the liver looks bright on hepatobiliary phase images. So this is very important. Uptake of gadoxetate or gadobenet requires functioning hepatocytes. Focal nodules without differentiated hepatocytes appear hypointense on hepatobiliary phase images. So what happens in hepatocarcinogenesis? In cirrhotic liver, cirrhotic nodules start developing unpaired arteries and form low-grade dysplastic nodule. Then with increasing atypia, high-grade dysplastic nodules are produced with slow layers of portal tracts. So with progressive malignancy, nodules lose portal blood supply and gain new arterial blood supply. But another thing also happens. With increasing malignancy, the hepatocytes also lose OATP transporters and cannot take up gadoxetate. From low-grade dysplastic nodule onwards, nodules become progressively hypointense in hepatobiliary phase. We can also see that although new arterial supply increase and portal supply decrease, the balance between the processes is such that only at the level of progressed HCC we can see arterial phase hyperenhancement. Therefore, the traditional criteria of arterial phase hyperenhancement only identify progressed HCC. So this is how it looks like at the level of progressed HCC. It is hypointense in non-contrast. Shows arterial phase hyper enhancement in arterial phase T1. In portal phase, there is washout and capsule enhancement with, a, with or without a rim. And in hepatopiliary phase, there is no uptake of gadoxetid showing a hypointense nodule. However, the present article focuses on this group of nodules. Among these nodules, high-grade dysplastic nodules is pre-malignant and early HCC is malignant. These nodules show decrease in OATP and hypointensity in hepatobiliary phase, but do not show arterial phase hyperenhancement. Is there any way we can identify these nodules? What is the distribution of these nodules among HBP hypointense nodules? So the authors looked at the pathologically proven HCC, dysplastic nodule and regenerative nodule in their database. These were their inclusion criteria. The reason child park score C is excluded is probably because these patients are not aggressively treated. The nodules should be less than 3 cm in inclusion criteria. There are two reasons for this. First, early HCC and dysplastic nodule are rarely more than 3 cm. And second, sub 3 cm nodules can be directly treated with ablation with just an imaging diagnosis. So imaging diagnosis is more meaningful in these nodules. This is the patient selection flowchart. We can see that the author started from pathology database and only selected regenerative nodule, dysplastic nodule, and HCC. So we do not have any information about the imaging features of non-hepatocellular nodules, which we have seen in earlier slide can constitute about 10% of all malignant nodules. We can see finally 334 nodules were reviewed by a central group of 10 pathologists. The central review of all nodules distinguishes this study from other similar studies, which relied on past records only. In the result, we see that the majority of these nodules are still progressed HCC and a significant portion are early HCC and high-grade dysplastic nodule. This may suggest that a HPP hypo 
intense nodule has less chance of being a low grade dysplastic nodule or regenerative nodule one problem with this review is however low agreement among pathologists about 1 in 10 nodule needed a second round of review before a consensus diagnosis we can also see majority of the lesions were graded lr3 and lr4 while pacc are more commonly graded as lr4 and low grade dysplastic nodule are more commonly graded as lr3 the distribution is pretty equal in high grade dysplastic nodule and early hcc among the multiple clinical and imaging uh, features that were studied in these nodules five were turned out to be significant in the multivariate analysis alt alpha fetoprotein more than 100 well defined margin t1 hypointensity t2 intermediate signal and diffusion restriction so when we use presence of three or more of these features to be the diagnostic standard of progress HCC, the sensitivity and specificity are about 69 and 85%, but when we use four or more variables, it becomes 56 and 95%, and when we use all five variables, it becomes almost 100%. So this is a case of uh, progressed HCC, which is T1 hypointense with no significant arterial hyperenhancement, but portal phase and delayed phase washout and hypointensity on HBP. And we can see it is T2 hyperintense and diffusion restriction is seen. On the other hand, in an early HCC, we can see there is no T1 hypointensity, no arterial hyperenhancement. There is subtle washout in portal and delayed phase with well defined a hyperdubiliary phase hypointensity it is not t2 hyperintense with no diffusion restriction so what we don't know atrix liver can also develop intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma which are hepatobiliary phase hypointense and may not have arterial phase hyperenhancement the selection process did not have room to include ihcc in consideration similarly we do not have any information on how to differentiate from other non-hepatocellular nodules since the authors have only chosen nodules that have pathological proof, there is a selection bias towards nodules that were more clinically suspicious. Since normally a HBP hypointense nodule without arterial phase hyperenhancement will not be biopsied or operated upon. And finally, if we diagnose more progressed HCC among these nodules, is that clinically useful? So to conclude, in hepatobiliary phase hypointense nodules less than 3 cm without arterial phase hyperenhancement, we see that the overwhelming majority are either malignant or pre-malignant and there are 5 features that has the increased odds of diagnosing progressed HCC which are AFP more than 100, well-defined margin, T1 hypointensity, T2 intermediate signal and diffusion restriction. So this is about today's journal watch. Thank you. We'll meet you again.